in the early hours of the morning at Milan Airport, Malpensa. This, this was the scene as the Inter fans greeted the arriving Romelu Lukaku, who had just uh, completed a £74 million pound move from uh, Manchester United. It was on again, it was off again, it was back on, it is finally done. Uh, his uh, transfer history, well, it shows you that Manchester United basically got their money back, nearly, nearly. May give or take uh, five or ten million pounds uh, with the move. They spent uh, close to 90 on him, uh, moving uh, from Everton two years ago. Stevie, uh, you haven't had to, the chance to weigh in on this since it was confirmed. This is perfect for him and for Inter. Yeah. You know, he's, he's better in a counter-attacking side. Conte will absolutely have them in a counter-attacking mode. Uh, it's absolutely a match made in heaven. Mm. United do well to get their money back? Close to uh, their money back? Absolutely. Listen, if you can get 74 million for somebody you don't want, it's not bad business, is it? Mm. No. No, <laughs> absolutely not. If, and all that would have happened was his value would have gone down and down and down as the, as the transfer windows disappeared. So, no, it's a great bit of business for uh, all concerned, if you ask well, me. It, well, it, well, it is in a way. I mean, I, look, they, clearly they didn't want him anymore and they've recouped a huge sum of money. But let's not forget, you're going to have a manager and a board already under pressure because it's not all right, Harry Maguire apart. What, it's fine selling somebody for that price. What, mm. Who's going to lead the line for Manchester United? A club that has been rich in the history of having great strikers. Mm. You know, even coming off the bench, the current manager, you know, coming off the bench, you know, supporting that to the likes of Teddy Sheringham and Andy Cole and Van Nistel and all these guys. They haven't got anybody. Mm. Mm. You know, Fergie always had four centre forwards. They always had four forwards. Now they've got Rashford. So the problem they've given themselves is if something happens to Rashford, injury, loss of form, whatever, then where do, where do they go? I mean, the only yeah. thing we, we might not be considering is that if somehow Alexis Sanchez rediscovers a form that nobody's, nobody's seen for, for quite some time. Otherwise, I, I'm in agreement with everybody here. At least Manchester United, a little bit thin. Listen, you've done well on a business, on a business side of, of things in, in getting as much money as you did for Lukaku. You probably could have done with getting this money a whole lot sooner in, in, in the summer and allow you to address some of those depth issues that, that his departure um, now puts on, on Solskjaer's, Solskjaer's plate. But uh, otherwise, right now, uh, again, unless we see something from Alexis Sanchez, it's, it's, uh, it leaves Solskjaer thin in terms of options. Ian, how do you uh, weigh up this move? Well, I think uh, the guys are right. I think Manchester United uh, look a bit thin on the ground in terms of strikers. It's obvious Marcus Rashford is uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's chosen man as his central striker. I think the moment that Solskjaer took over, really, it was the beginning of the end for Romelu Lukaku. That's been a cold war. It's become even worse than that. And this uh, this deal with Inter has been going on for several weeks and at last they've managed to, to make it. But Lukaku hasn't kicked a ball, has he, in pre-season? He's allegedly had an ankle injury, which is why he played no part in the pre-season tour. So they've got to sort that bit out first. But they've got people like Mason Greenwood uh, but he's a 17-year-old and he's probably not ready to start in the Premier League. So Rashford has to come off. Mm. Can't rely on Martial. Uh, and, and he's a talented boy, but he's so up and down. You've got Matic in there who was flagging last season. You've got Pogba who's still there. He might go uh, before the transfer ends for the European uh, clubs, but really doesn't want to be there. Uh, it does I, I, leave him thin on the ground, doesn't it? Listen... It, it's, it's not an inspiring it, lineup, is it? No, this has been a you know, <laughs> all right, they've paid a lot of money for Harry Maguire, but and he's a very good player, but it's been a it's been a, a pretty poor mm. transfer window once again for Ed Woodward, who had lots of time to go out and give Solskjaer the players that he needed. Not not a full back and a, a centre half. That's that's not enough. No one there. Julian, I guess United and Lukaku will always have that night in Paris, won't they? Oh, sorry, sorry for reminding you that. But, um, <laughs> but it does leave them, does it not, thin on the ground? We've been talking about Rashford and Martial, uh, young Mason Greenwood. Uh, massively. And I, I really find it hard to understand and to believe that a club like Manchester United, who have known for weeks now that Romero Lukaku didn't want to be there, didn't want to work, work with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, that he was going to leave at some point for a lot of money. They, they knew that. It was a fact. Everybody knew it. And yet, at no point at all this summer, they put a plan in place to replace him, to go after someone else. Mandzukic a little bit. Dybala, obviously, with the swap with, with Lukaku and Juventus at that time. 
then a bit of Mandzukic. But that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't understand what the strategy is. I mean, I understand there was no strategy at all when it came to attacking players this summer. It was all about the defence and the right back in one Bissaka and the centre back with, with Maguire. But that's it. And I think for a club like United, it's just not good enough. You cannot leave, you cannot start the season without a, a, a striker like Lukaku and having not replacing him, it's just not good enough. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.